Good evening, everyone. Be welcome to Evening with Gelda program. Today, I'd like to present you um, someone special by her generosity, her talent. I'm talking about it. Remedios Villapando. She is known in Pen Wonders International Group as Mary Villapando. Mary Villapando is from Philippines. She took it up diploma in secretarial and diploma in creative writing at the WMCA Hong Kong while she was working there. She published her first book of poetry, Reflections of Existence, in 1999. She is now a retired overseas Filipino worker and enjoying life writing poetry and doing carpentry and occasionally run ref marathon for good health. Wow! We have an athlete between us. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Mary, be welcome to our interview moment. Tia Poeres, what poetry means for you? Tell us. Good afternoon. Poetry is everything to me. It's everything. Poetry is everything to me. It is my whole life, my dreams, my pleasures and pain, the changing seasons, hello and goodbye. Did I say more? Of course, poetry has a different meanings to others, but definitely it's our way of coping with life. We write poetry and so we survive everything. The pleasures and pain. We survive our dreams which we couldn't hold on to because the dreams is impossible to attain. So we write poetry. It's my way of releasing all my thoughts and feelings, my emotions. The deep loneliness is so deep, you just have to write it in poetry. That is poetry to me. In your opinion, is poetry the most beautiful way to expand universal literature? Yes, poetry is the most beautiful way to expand our universal literature because everybody wants to write poetry and everybody wants to shine in it. So they write poetry endlessly. But of course, it is still depends on how fluent we are with our language. And that is the English language. We have to be very fluent in it so that everyone can understand our English. So that's the way we can communicate our poetry to the world. Because everyone writes poetry everywhere. Sri Lankan, they write poetry, the Indians. So it's a great way to promote our literature. Just like many Filipino write poetry and they publish their books so they become more famous. So yes, it can be. It can be a vehicle to promote our own literature, the literature in the whole world.
Which poetic style do you prefer? I wrote in so many poetic styles because I have studied every kind of poetry I saw on FB and FB also had taught me a lot about it. So I have learned from FB the septon, Sidoka, Siju, Kuryu, and Sir Richard Doiron, thank you very much. He taught me how to write Return Me and Triolet, which is also you can see in my in my collection of poetry in on FB. But I love very much the haiku, so I will write my poem in long haikus, telling everything. The tanka, the haiku lin, I all write this. But singing is very difficult because there are only two lines which you can maneuver the poem two long lines, the six, the six, the line with the six syllables and the line with the eight. All the rest is four and two, so it's not easy to write this one. But all the rest, the haikulin, the triolet, but triolet you have just, you just have to repeat the other verses. And so, not so many verses to write in in eight lines. But of course, we love the sonnet by Shakespeare. I love this, but I don't write so much this one because the lines are long, 10 and 14. But now, there was a trend in writing Long points in FB on the contest. Oh, everyone is, everyone is writing. In, in fact, I became a featured artist on my 50 line poem. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's nice when you're winning, but then the most important thing is when we could write our points, when we could express fully ourselves, how we feel about the world, how we feel about love and life, how we can cope up with our dreams. So you can write it in either way. Even there is a, a style of poetry which is very, very easy to write because you only have to think about six words three lines one point six words and you call it in hainaku so i wrote this but then last year i have been writing gugyosi so much I was so in love with this. Gugyosi is a five line poem which has no meter. And you just have to write it with capitals at the beginning of each line. But it is also about nature. So you just have to go out, see the flower, the clouds, and then you can write the poetry. And of course, the tanka is very nice. And that's how you cannot write haiku anymore because when you write the, when you write the, han, the haiku, you will, you will think that, oh, I add two, just two lines and then I make it a tanka. So that's how I began to miss my my high coupons.
I will write a haiku, then it will become a time card. So that's it. But any poetic style is good as long as you can maneuver the lines. And the lines are not hanging. That's the technique in writing poetry. But sometimes, when you want a very uniform style, just like the quatrain, the rhyming quatrain. You, you, you are going to leave your lines hanging because you don't want to become it, to, that it will become more with words, overflowing with words, because the rhyming poems also are measured, the quatrain. So that is how sometimes the, they write their poems. But most of all, the free verse is very good style. Because you can maneuver freely within the lines, within the poems. Because it is free. So it is wandering freely within the poem. Your thoughts are wandering freely because it is a free verse. Oh, I love this. I love the free verse. But also the rhyming verse is, is good if you have mastered it. But sometimes otherwise, sometimes it was hard to end the line. And that is the, the risk in writing a, a rhyming poem. So very seldom I wrote this one. But you can make your own poetry. You can invent. I even invented a Siptan Hike and a Gogyosi with all the first line. That became the sixth line of a five year, of a five, five line Gogyosi. But you can only see the five lines, the six lines, you read downward from all the first lines of the Gugyosi, from all the first words. So this is my poetry style. But Cite an ancient and a contemporary poet who inspires you the most in the construction of your poetry. Well, of course, we're all inspired with, with the sonnets of Shakespeare and the prophet written by Khalil Gibran. It was a very inspiring book and I think it's, it is read the whole world over. But of course, we also delve on the poetry of Edgar Allan Poe, Sarah Tisdale, Sarah Tisdale, Anna Hempstead Branch, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and many, and Robert Frost. But of course, normally we don't remember <laughs> their poems. We just know it when we read them subconsciously in our in our mind. But of course, I love the modern poetry wherein you express freely what you feel about life. So, Lipo is also good. But of course, you never know how the poems are translated because it is originally written in the in the Chinese language. But I love the translation of Lipo by David Hinton. He selected poems. So he's one of the the masters in Chinese literature and you would love you would love to 
you would love to read this book so I can share with you one short point about him it's about a farewell point farewell to Yin Shu we drink deeply beneath dragon bamboo our lamp faint the moon called again on the sandbar startled by drunken song a snowy grit leaps away past midnight so it's about the moon and drunken at that moment there's an egret and it was past midnight and there's another short point the birds have all vanished into deep skies the last cloud drifts away aimless inexhaustible Ching Ting Mountain and I gaze at each other it alone remaining uh, it's about solitude he's living alone in the mountain so this is it and of course there's the sonnet by Shakespeare and we love the sonnet so very much so this is where I got some inspiration but when I was in Hong Kong so much books so much library and you can just borrow 10 books a week or whenever you want to renew because it's a good place to be with so much books so you write on you read only poetry also <laughs> because you're a poet and you love poetry Mary what advice would you like to give to those who are starting in the field of poetry to those who are just starting to write poetry my advice is first learn the simple grammar rules and then first use the simple words then if you have learned it well you can start using the high words but mostly I want to advise that using high words must be must be not throughout the, the poem you are writing in a long poem you can just put one or three high words and then that's all don't make people think that you are flaunting your master's degree or your PhDs because of course it's more easy to understand and feel why it was written why the poem is there if it is written in simple language well our simple feelings need not be flying so high above the horizon of of very chaotic words which we could we couldn't hardly understand anyway but if that is your way then maybe not everyone can understand your points only those having master's degree or master's degree because your poem, the one you write is like a dissertation paper. So that is my advice. Well, I have read one poem which, which is very nice anyway because, but the words are so high. But the high words fit the poem so. That's the only time I was happy with a highfalutin words in a poem. So simplicity, good grammar, and more practice. 
that's the way we can learn how to write poetry. And of course, if we can write from the heart, it's more important because the reader can feel. The reader can, re can relate to what you have written. And now, finishing our interview, if you don't mind, can you recite a poem of yours for all of us now? In memory, I heard a lullaby which reminds me of my mom, a home sweet home. When I was young, it sheltered me from harm. It gave me love and warmth. It gave me laughter. Wipe away my tears. It gave me everything I need to live. Now they're all gone, nothing is left, but memories of the meadows and the coconut fields, memories overflow. But the river where I cut shrimp has gone dry. No more shall I see my mom and her beautiful hands clearing the fields for vegetables and other plants, sieving my dress, combing my hair, cooking sweets, entertaining everyone taking care of my child, the way she took care of me when I was young. No more shall I see her beautiful garden in a beautiful cemetery of beaming flowers and ornamental plants. I knew nothing about them except the joy they gave to everyone. No more shall I see her artful ways, creating an, a home that lasted an eternity. I created one that crumbled to the ground. She was ever faithful to my dad. She married him and his clan. To her, he was a prince and a king rolled into one. Her marriage was her religion. Mine, the creed I left behind. To my dad, she was the only queen in his lifetime. No more shall I see her loveliness in graceful ways, exuding an aura of serenity, accepting reality as they come. I shall see no more the magic of her charms when everyone would treat her like a princess within the clan. I shall hear no more the wonders of her voice, creating a melody of love and fantasy, creating a lifetime, creating a dream to be with the stars and live through eternity. I shall see no more her many ways of loving me, of trying to understand who I want to be, who I really am. I shall see no more her grief, because she failed in me, she was not to blame, it was my destiny. No more shall I see her words, denoting wisdom and clarity, denoting vision and reality. She molded unto me values lasting a lifetime, a passion for life, a passion for feelings, a passion for art, a passion to, for, for beautiful words, a passion to fight for my rights, and a passion to survive tragic reality. It grieves me that her mortality continues to live through only in the verses of my poetry. She is gone forever like the summer breeze of the years gone by when my world was young and I was free to live to love, to dream, to cherish all that are mine, to shape my destiny. Great, it's great, Buras. Receive our thanks for your moment, for this moment, for your enriching presence between us, okay? Stay well. And thank you so very much. And you guys, I hope to see you again in the next Sunday. Bye-bye.